Yeah, that's fine. Babe, you want to go over there? You want a chair, sweetheart? Or are you good? Don't touch these wires. Okay. Just make sure your phone is not near, like... He won't yell at you, he'll yell at me, but... <laughs> I won't yell at you. Welcome everybody to Off the Cuff. I am Adam Banks coming at you live from Lexington, Kentucky. Thank you for listening to the show and thank you for tuning in to WLXU 93.9 FM. In addition to listening to us on the radio, you can check out our Facebook live stream at Off the Cuff with Adam Banks or you can download the WLXU app on your smartphone device to listen to us anywhere in the world. Amber Turner, as always, is in the studio with me. Amber, how are you today? Adam, I had my blood drawn today. Yeah? And it was terrible. It was a terrible experience. Did you pass out or something? I, I, I passed out. Like, I, I thought that was the end, of the end of the line for me. <laughs> I have literally never passed out from blood, and I'm, I'm not a needle person. <laughs> well, you know. I don't think it's good for anybody to be a needle person, though. 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe people who get tattoos all the time. Well, the yeah, true, very true. Well, yeah. the worst thing happened to me today. Actually, oh, usually Thursdays is a very chill, happy day for me. But not this Thursday. Oh, I was geez. doing some laundry. Early. Okay. And uh, usually laundry is pretty chill. You wash your clothes. You take your clothes out. You fold them, you put them away, kind of therapeutic almost. Well, I don't know about that, but okay. But I was doing my laundry, and when I, I was like, you know, I'm going to do a big load of laundry. I'm going to put in a lot of clothes just well, to get everything you, done. That I'm, was your first mistake. Exactly. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get it all done at once, because I'm an impatient person. Like that Alabama song says, I'm in a hurry to get things done. <laughs> You're always in a hurry. Oh, I rush and rush until I'm so fun. <laughs> and I don't know why. I really don't know why, but I, I put a whole big load of laundry in, and okay. when I did that, I was, like, feeling good about myself, put it in the dryer, and when I got my clothes out of the dryer, I noticed these little ink <gasps> marks what did on you my know? favorite hoodie that I actually wore last week on the show. That the little, the pink hoodie? Yeah, the salmon hoodie, not pink. It's pink. It's salmon. It's pink. But it, what color is that? Is that pink or salmon? <laughs> <laughs> that, that pink. <laughs> but I put, I, I noticed that there was ink not only on my favorite hoodie, but my, my favorite pants. The gray ones? My, those blue ones that I wear. Okay. I, call, I call them the Adam Banks pants. Yes, those are the Adam Banks pants. I, I got ink all over every piece of clothing item in that dryer. I destroyed all my clothes. And you know the one thing I discovered about ink? What? You can't get rid of it. You know what? I can help you with that, though. Can you really? We, we can work on that. That could be a weekend project The jeans that I have on right now, if you look closely, there's ink all over them. There's, oh. And if you if you look all over pretty much anything that I wear from here on out, because it was a big load of a lot of my good clothes. Well, you know, They've got ink all over them. I, I think it might be something with Thursdays, because, you know, last Thursday we, we were having printer issues, remember? Yeah. We were having printer problems. Yes. And I took the cartridge out to shake it, to shake it, <laughs> to shake it, and I threw ink everywhere. Yeah, and ink. Unbeknownst to my husband, there's ink everywhere in his office. Well, now he knows. Now he knows. Yeah, now, he, <laughs> now he knows. Yeah, he's in the studio with us He today, is in folks. the studio, uh, taking pictures. Yeah, he, he last week tried to call in and win those tickets, which, by the way, went to JV on trailer last week. He was the first caller yes. who, who took those tickets, so that was that was cool. I, I really enjoyed that. But, uh, yeah, ink all over my clothes. Hor horrible start to my day. Well, we'll fix it. I'll fix it. Yeah, horrible start today. We got a big show today, Amber. We got Boy Moy Bueno in studio. We're going to do an interview with him later on in the hour. So we are looking forward to that. Are you excited? Yeah, to have I am him in excited. Studio? He, he called in and did an interview with us a couple of weeks ago. So it's always, I feel like interviews flow better when they're in studio. Well, I like it when people also give us the chance to debut their music for them because it's good for us, it's good for them, and yeah. so I'm excited. Yeah, and I think that the city of Lexington is waiting for an artist like Boy Boy Bueno. And the thing is, is his name is a mouthful. It, it is. is. It is. And, and, you, and you struggle. I do. You I, struggle. I do. I, I, because my native tongue, mm -hmm. it, it's, not, it's not the best. <laughs> so, so I discussed with him before the show, I said, what shall I call you? You know, because I don't want to just call you boy. You know, it just sounds like <laughs> insult. How you doing, boy? Uh, well, I mean, somebody last week called your brother the whole show. And then, and then I could do boy moy. But but then it but then he said you know it's short, B and B is short. And yeah. I was like you know what I'm gonna take it B and B. Yeah. So we got B and B on the show later that we're gonna talk to. Hey. I'm, I'm excited about it. All right. Yeah. Did you have a good Did you have a good week? I'm not man. I've been sick. So it's just been a bad week. It's just been a bad week. Putting it's out, just been a bad putting week. out the positive vibes out there. On there the we go. <laughs> well, I had a great week. I went to the casino this weekend. Spent my entire weekend at the casino gambling on sports. You know, because we can't do it in Kentucky. Exactly. Which I'll get to the governor election in just a minute. But the uh, went to the casino, gambled, and I had a blast. Okay. Won, won some money. Okay, so that saved you anything. I did, and where I go, Hollywood Casino, it's a, well, they put us on the fourth floor uh, because I, I get free hotel rooms. That's usually they, the free hotel rooms. Well, where is, was my invite to this free hotel room? Well, eventually. Oh, okay. You, you, you've got to learn how to gamble first. I've, I do just fine gambling. But it... There's, there's, uh, you gotta take a lot of elevators when you stay at the casino. You gotta <laughs> okay. take elevators, and there's nothing more frustrating than riding the elevator with somebody who doesn't know how to ride an elevator. Oh, and that's, mm, that's like number two pet peeve in my, in my life. Elevator etiquette. Elevator etiquette. Yeah. It don't exist. Have you? Tell me an experience. Uh, of bad elevator etiquette that you've had. Well, you know, I'm back in school now, so I'm around all the little chitlins. Yeah. All the little chitlins yeah. running around, and they, they're they buried in their cell phones. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are buried in their cell phones. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. Yeah. Elevator go to your floor, doors will open, and, yeah, you can get on, but 
they some of us that want to get off on that floor too. Right. Let me off before you get on. Exactly. Yeah. I knocked this poor girl. I knocked her down. <laughs> Plum down. She lost, threw her phone. Her legs flew out. She was flailing like a salmon. <laughs> and I was like, "Excuse me." And I just kept walking. I wasn't helping her. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Or people who take elevators just one floor up. Well, now I'm. I, Look, I'm chubby, so <laughs> I am very guilty of that. Well, I, I guess it's fine. I mean, really. I mean, I, who, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it, too. But in college, it was really frustrating because I lived on the 13th floor, Whoa. and there was nothing more frustrating than seeing just a, a little slowpoke turtle just do do <laughs> i got to take the elevator to the second floor. <laughs> yes, elevator etiquette is something that goes a long way. Learn it, folks. Learn yes. it. Yes. But in Kentucky, the re finally officially happened. Oh, I couldn't think of anything more boring to sit down and watch. I would probably rather watch a female basketball game than oh. watch the re canvas in Kentucky. <laughs> yes. Who? Is it? Are you telling me that you like to watch women's basketball competitively? I mean... I don't. No. No. I no. mean, I, mean, no. I, 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 I was going to say yes and try to lie, but no, I'm good. Yeah, I, I'd rather slosh paint up on the wall and watch it dry. <laughs> That's I mean, the one I was like, no, I'm from you. I'm not against it. I just, it's just not for it's me. It's just like for you. But I, I couldn't think of anything more boring than watch besides uh, that, than the re canvas in Kentucky, because uh. they had like little snippets of it on Facebook Live, yeah. and they said that uh, they were going by each county, like, not county, uh, Bevan. 2,465. Bashir, 2,469. You know? Yeah. And they, they, they were going through that through every county. Well, it finally happened. It's over. They de- They determined that Andy Bashir did, in fact, win. I don't know the exact numbers because... I, I was trying to follow the story the best I could. It's not much different than what we what we already knew. Yeah, I was trying to follow it, but seeing is that we go on at four o'clock, and this re-canvas was an ongoing thing. Yeah, well, like it was um, hard to to keep up with it. I caught the uh, the live stream of Governor Bevan finally. Well, he's not Governor Bevan anymore. Matt Bevan uh, conceding finally today. <laughs> Um, but he still, like, what I got to watch of it, the man still wouldn't just say, I lost. Yeah. He was just like, I wish you nothing but the best. It's bad when you lose twice. Yes, like, <laughs> just say, I-, I lost, good luck, here you go, bye bye So it was a re-canvas, not a recount. Unlike a standard recount of votes, a re-canvas is a reprint of the receipts from voting machines to check for reporting or clerical errors. After ballots are scanned, the machine tablets, I guess that's the word, Tablet, probably. Yeah, votes and prints out a receipt with the total. Did I, did I tell you last week that they asked me to work the precinct? Yeah, I think we talked about that privately. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I think we talked about it privately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They asked me to work the a precinct. You should. Uh, Do you know how fun that would be to go live from the precinct? Yeah, but, how, but think about that, how random that was that I got selected out of everybody in that precinct. They selected me to work it. Well, I would select you to work it. Yeah. Now, I would yeah. have done a really good job. They It was something like $200. You had to go through training. But I had night class, so I couldn't do it. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. It, would, but, it would have been fun. Yeah. It would have been a lot It would have been fun. fun. And the voter turnout was better than expected. Well, I, and I was a little worried. You know, we got up and we went, I think, at, you know, Buck Crack O'Dawn. I think we were there at like 6.30 at the polls. Buck Crack O'Dawn. Buck Crack O'Dawn. <laughs> uh, there was nobody there. Yeah. Nobody there. So I was a little worried. I'm not going to lie. But I did see some some huge numbers here in Fayette County. So I'm seeing huge numbers too, and isn't it odd that everybody that I speak to, everybody that I speak to, says that they didn't have a line to stand in when they went to vote. But I'm hearing all this great voter turnout. Um, fake news, perhaps? I don't know. Fake news? I don't know. I don't know. You know what's not fake news though, Amber? What? The Kentucky Wildcats. Oh. Being number one in the entire country and then holding on to that for just a week <laughs> and then lost to Evansville. <laughs> Who? Lost to Evansville. They got knocked off their pedestal. So let me just tell you uh, a little bit about Kentucky basketball, like my thoughts on it. So we all know that Kentucky basketball is officially underway. Underway, okay. It's officially underway. We started the season off great. We beat the number one team in the entire country, Michigan State. Okay. okay. So off to a good start. Off to a good start. Better start than last year. We lost to Duke. Here we are, number one team in the entire uh, country, Kentucky. It's always fun, and it always gives us momentum when we're number yeah, one. BBN is in full swing when we're number one. Oh, full swing. It's just the, it's what we expect. Gang number two, we absolutely destroy EKU. You're sweet. Ah, you know. As expected. And here we are, game three, already knocked off our pedestal at a home game against Evansville. Coached by Walter McCarty, if you don't recognize that name, he was a 1996 Kentucky basketball player. Oh. Played on the championship team. 
I like Walter, good guy, but came in and beat us. This ESPN is saying that this is now, in the last 15 years, tied with three other teams as the top, one of the worst upsets in the last 15 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with it. I mean, it was, it, was, it was not a good day for us. Yeah. And not only was it, did we lose, but did you, did you know that we were 25-point favorites? Not only was Kentucky supposed to win, we were supposed to win by 25 points or more. I, I don't think that happened. Talk about the easy, I give bets all the time. You talk, I give my betting predictions all the time. Talk about an easy bet if you predicted the, the uh, 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 spread, if you picked uh, Evansville 25 But who points. would have picked Evansville over Kentucky? I mean, I'm sure somebody did. Somebody did, because 25 points is a big spread, and usually Cal covers the spread, but he didn't. He didn't. No. I, I mean, it's not like we have a bad team. No. I mean, we just got outplayed. We we couldn't get our our, our offense going, our defense going. We were just off to a slow well, start from the very beginning. we got the same problem we had last year. We don't play as a team. Everybody's good single. Like, you're good in singles games, but you're not playing a singles game. You're playing in a, in a group. Listen to these stats. They shot 4 of 17 from the three-point range and had a 16 or 6 to 13 assist to turnover ratio. Pretty bad. What? I mean, frankly, Kentucky was just straight up outplayed by Evansville. And uh, this is obviously the biggest win for in the history of Evansville's basketball program. It's a signature win. Oh, yeah. It's Walter McCarty's second year coaching. Uh, he, uh, let's see, his second year, his stat was, uh, I had his record of what his stat was, but I can't find it. Well, I mean, the fact he came back and beat his alma mater. Yeah. That right there is enough and probably he, to get his career on. Yeah, you know how much that meant to him. But, uh, and the atmosphere at Rub. Did you see what a pitiful disgrace of a crowd that Referina had? I, you know, I, I didn't stick around after I realized that things weren't going to go our way, so I watched the Facebook Warriors. Well, nobody showed up to the game. They, it looked empty in Upper Arena. Ugh. Yeah, it, it looked empty. Nobody, but you know, it was cold. People don't yeah, like to get cold. out on the cold. Uh, people don't. It was a school night. Well, but we're the number one team in the country. Exactly. Where, where's our fans? Exactly. Where were those students at? What, right. Would yeah. that have made a difference? But that, probably I, not. I think this should wake the Kentucky basketball program, these administrators, up. We need to make Rupp Arena more friendly. I have said this before. Rupp Arena is, I wouldn't even rank it as one of the top five, one of the top ten even, best college basketball atmospheres in college basketball. No. It's not... A good atmosphere. No, it's you got oh you got these old people sitting down with their little blue sweater vest on in the front row. They uh, think that they're uh, what's that guy, the rich and the famous guy that used to come on caviar and champagne. Yeah, they're they're they all look like that. They just attended private school their yeah, entire life. Yeah, just got life. off their yacht. Yeah, they just got off their yacht. There is no energy down there. No. Did I tell you that me and my friend got kicked out of Rep Arena because we were cheering too loud down there for yes, the old people? I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I almost stepped on Mrs. Cow's feet. Oh, well. Yeah, that's how close I was to the floor. <laughs> and, but that's that's a that's that's a place that Kentucky fans don't want to be is next to the floor if you're at Rep Arena because the atmosphere is so bad. The yeah. atmosphere it really is bad. They won't let they price they outprice these tickets. They make it so unaffordable for the average Joe to go to a game, and when you go to a game, they stick you up there. In the nosebleed. Literally in the nosebleed. Your nose starts bleeding. You're, yes. It's, it's, and it's not like those seats eyes. are any cheaper. It's not like those seats are any cheaper. So, the atmosphere, and it just was even worse Ugh. against Evansville. Even worse. They, when they seen ticket sales were down that bad, why were they not giving out free student tickets? At that point. So, yeah. The next time Kentucky plays, it's against Utah Valley State this Monday at 7 o'clock on ESPN2. I don't know the line yet for that game, but uh, with the way Kentucky's been playing, I'd probably <laughs> stay away from that one. All right, folks, we got lots more off the cuff coming up right after these words. Stick with us. Yeah, what was the An ink pen from, from the from the I can fix it, I think. Yes. Yeah. From the um, underscores. Plus, you can get uh, a checklist to make sure our emergency has everything. I have a song under your bed. Oh, I have to I have to reset that. So, when you finish this commercial, you can just start and I'll, I'll reset that. Okay. Don't give you just that. Go to the Apple or Google Play Store. 
and download oh my god, they look down a lot of action going on. Action. Or yeah. Android phone or tablet. As soon as you install it, you'll have all the information you need to be prepared right at your fingertips. Learn more about how to be ready for emergencies at BeReadyLexington.com. Social media is proud to support Lexington Community Radio. Since 1972, we have offered eclectic books and gifts with an international and alternative perspective. Open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Located at 371 South Limestone. Special media, our voices, back, our radio. Thanks, ma'am. That's my producer from my Okay, he's on there. Same Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in the studio with me. Thank you, Victor. Appreciate it very much. Best program director in the world right there, In the guys. business. Thank in you. the business. Best program director in the world. You like that song? I like that song. I feel like I should be in my back of my pipe all truck going down to the Big S. Not the Baby Creek Restaurant. I, you know what? Going to the Baby Creek Restaurant to get me a homemade cherry Coke. Restaurant. Restaurant. Don't I go have back, to say it like don't that. Don't go back there in that kitchen. <laughs> Don't go back there in that kitchen. <laughs> Amber, that's back when times were simple. You know, going yeah. to the big ass, going to the restaurant. That, that was good times, driving in the back of your papa's truck. Times were simple back then. Now times are a little complicated because uh, you got things like the gender reveal. I, I hear, oh, I hear. come on. Yeah, the gender reveal uh, that people do when they get pregnant. You know, it's a boy or it's a girl. I, I just want to go ahead and say on record, if any of my friends are having children and you plan on doing a gender reveal, do not invite me. <laughs> I absolutely will not come. You don't like it? I'm not coming. Well, it used to. It used to be you get a cigar. You, somebody would post your... Or really, that was it. You got a cigar, right? Or, well, or a mean, sucker that said, it's a boy, it's a girl. That's yeah, how, that's and how you got that the day the kid was born. But now people are doing all these extravagant things. They're, uh... <gasps> should I answer it on the air? No. It's probably a telemarketer, to be honest with probably. you. Probably. Look at our boy. And everybody who's listening knows he yells at me over mine. Yeah, I should put it on silent. Put it on silent. <laughs> should I answer it? Should I answer this call seriously? And just say, you are... No, that's probably illegal. No, they're calling you. They have no idea who no, whose number that is. Uh, <laughs> you're calling me while I'm at work. Yeah. They're not, yeah. They're interested. Well, they just got saved. I'm not going to answer. I'll send them to the voicemail. But anyway. Reject button. The gender reveals. People are doing all these extravagant things. Have you heard the latest gender reveal tragedy? Unfortunately. Okay. So it's it's a dangerous trend. So on there was a stunt that was pulled on September the 7th. So a little bit ago. It was intended, it was a little airplane, little Cessna flying around, and it was intended to... Not the Cessna that you were flying around in that one time when your feet dang on. No. <laughs> okay. Probably a plane just like that. <laughs> but it had dumped 300... And, it, the, what the plane was supposed to do was dump 350 gallons of pink water to let everybody know it was a girl. Oh, jeez. Well, what happened was when they dumped the pink water, it was so much water, they dumped it all at once, it threw the plane off balance, and it crashed. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, it was... Uh, it says that the plane happened in Turkey. The plane crash happened in Turkey, Texas. The pilot, identified as Raj Horan, was not injured, and his passenger suffered minor injuries. And uh, authorities say that another incident happened back in October. A woman by the name of Pamela Kraymeyer, she died after members of her family inadvertently created a pipe bomb while trying to make a device that would shoot colored gunpowder out of a stand. This is too much. Who's cleaning up after these people? That's what I want to know. I, I like it when the people have these gender reveals and uh, like the, the guy really wants a little boy and it ends up he sees all this pink stuff come out. I love it. I love it. And you could just I'm tell like, it, that's karma, baby. You, you right can just there. tell in his face he's not happy. That's karma for you. <laughs> Why can't... Like, seriously, I want to know, you know, I'm doing environmental engineering. Who's cleaning up after these people? Like, who, like, is there glitter 
just going to be everywhere in this world because people are doing all these gender reveals. There's glitter everywhere. Honestly, there is an article that, that was just written about the trash that's left after these gender reveals. Pick up y'all trash. <laughs> I don't care about you, kid. Pick up your trash. You're very passionate about this. I am. I, because what's the, the one thing we have to have to keep living? We have to have air and we have to have a place to stay. Well, so you'll love this then. In 2017, someone did a gender reveal stunt and it accidentally sparked a wildfire and it cost 45,000 acre land to be damaged, and it cost more than $8 million. And think about all the life. To get it fixed. All the life that was taken away from the wildlife. Yeah. I mean, literally, it was like you might as well just went and burned down somebody else's house. That would have been a lot less expensive. And I hope they had to pay every bit of that back. I hope they have to go through the their, their, their reclaiming process of fixing that land. Yeah. That's back when uh, back when times were simple. Like, literally, kids eat their own boogers and poop. We don't need to do all this. You know what else was simple? Was when you was home on snow days and you got to watch soap operas with your family members. <laughs> you know what's... what's I'm going to let you finish because this is going to make me sad. All of the characters on Days of Our Lives have been released from their contracts. The long-running NBC soap opera, which premiered in November 1965... Yep. 1965 will go on an indefinite hiatus at the end of this month after laying off its entire staff. Days for Our Lives reportedly shoots eight months in advance and has enough content to air episodes through next summer while Sony Pictures Television reports. If the series is renewed, the cast will negotiate new contracts and resume taping next spring. So a bunch of people from the Days of Our Life cast... They have got on their social media, and they, they're they saying that all these reports about Days of Our Lives being canceled, nothing to worry about, it's fake news, they're not going anywhere. They said that they've just filmed too many episodes, so it's costing them money, so they're just going on a hiatus. So everybody's thinking that John and Marlena and Bo and Hope are going away. They're not. And yes, I know who all these characters We're are. Saying because me. I used to watch it with my mom when during Snow Days from BCS. I used to watch... Soap poppers. Sammy and Austin and Brady. I remember that. Sammy, Austin, and Brady. <laughs> do you remember Princess Gina? I do. A.K.A. Hope. Hope. Yeah. That was a, that was a good storyline. Yeah. Not better than Marlena being possessed by the devil. That was the. That's what got me addicted to Days of Our Lives. <laughs> and I bet you I could probably start watching Days of Our Lives now and pick up right where I left. No, off. it's absolutely terrible now. Roman is still on it though. I will say that I saw Roman on there eating some uh, some Mexican food. <laughs> what? I didn't see that because he was sitting there eating chips and salsa and I was like there's no way I would do that in a white sweater and he was Days, uh, soap operas you don't see them anymore they used to be all over TV uh, there's only three active soap operas today General Hospital Days of Our Lives Young and the Restless they are out of all the shows that are currently on the air they're yeah. the most longest running TV shows on the air episode count yeah. Episode count. Let me tell you, General Hospital has had 14,557 episodes. Wow. Days of Our Lives, second, with 13,655 episodes. Young and the Restless, third, 11,745 episodes. Do you know what the most, long, the longest running TV drama of all time is? It's a soap opera. Is it as the world turns? It's Guiding Light. Okay. We have 15,762 episodes, and that ended back in 2009. So just think if it was still on the air, it would have been unbeatable. Yep. It would have been unbeatable. And my granny liked that one a lot, too, Guiding Light. Yeah. So uh, this woman from, I don't know who this is. This must be a new person from Days for Our Lives. Her name is Camille Banus. She plays Gabriela Hernandez. She posted a live... Twitter stream calling the reports fake news. She says, let me be clear and clear this up for everybody. All these articles with headlines saying that our show's being axed, that we have all been fired is BS. It is fake. BS. I have not been fired from Days of Our Lives. That is ridiculous. None of my co-stars have been fired from the show. So there you go. Days of Our Lives BS. is not going anywhere. It's BS. Okay. It's BS. But you know what ain't BS? What? It's off the cuffs. Song of the Week that is uh, about to be played. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I played this on uh, the Instagram advertisement for the show. I don't know if you ever check the ads for Off the Cuff on... Well, it would be weird because we've thing. usually got dual... I've got my own little... You feel like it's a competition? No, it's not a competition. We're doing the same thing. 
Same thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, wrote on them windows. It's actually a nice day. It's nice. Enjoy it. Off the cuff song of the week. We'll be right back after the song. I was like, I'm just gonna let Amber yell at it. You like the song? That was chill. It is a chill that song. Was, that gave a good vibe. We needed that today. So uh, today is today is an anniversary of speaking of plane crashes. Yeah. Today, November the eleventh, twenty nineteen, marks the anniversary from nineteen seventy. So what is that? Thirty years? Seventy, eighty, ninety, thousand. Wow. Forty. About forty nine. Forty nine. 49 years. Almost yeah, 50. 49. <laughs> <laughs> so November 14th, 1970, the uh, Marshall plane crash that killed the entire football uh, team, staff, crew, they uh, were all on a plane coming back from a game and it crashed uh, landing at the Huntington Airport yep. on November 14th, 1970. Today is, is that 49 year anniversary. I, and actually, we met, um, I don't know if you remember this or not, but we met a starting quarterback from Marshall. When I went to Murray State University, um, his name was Zach, and he ended up coming to Murray, but... Well, there were 75 occupants on the planes, uh, 71 passengers total, five crew, and uh, everyone on board survived. There were zero survivors. Very sad, but that happened 49 years ago today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got lots more off the cuff coming at you live right after these words. Stick with us. Co-host of Lexington Food Justice Radio, and you are listening to Radio Lex, the voice of the people. 
WLXU 93.9 LPFM Lexington Community Radio. Skishel Media is proud to support Lexington Community Radio. Since 1972, we have offered eclectic books and gifts with an international and alternative perspective. Open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Located at 371 South Limestone, Skechel Media, our voices, our radio. Mm. Mm. Oh, I, I have to just uh, keep my brain calm. Hey listeners, now you can bring Lexington Community Radio with you wherever you go with the new app for smartphones and tablets. The WLXU app is available on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just search for WLXU. You can stream what is currently playing from your phone or tablet, no matter where you are. Keep up with news from the station or catch on-demand episodes of your favorite talk shows. The WLXU app is available on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Welcome back, everybody, to Off the Cuff. Adam Banks here with you. Amber is also in the studio with me. You know this song by Clifford Harris, don't you? <laughs> People are going to know who Clifford Harris is. Rapper T.I. Rapper and actor T.I. has made some news because in a recent interview that aired last week on Tuesday, he says that he goes with his 18-year-old daughter to the gynecologist each year to check her hymen. And make sure it's still intact. So he made the remarks on the podcast entitled Ladies Like Us, hosted by model Nazine Mandy and makeup artist Nadia Moham. Why can't anybody have normal names these days? <laughs> when the host asked the rapper if he had the sex talk with his daughter, uh, T.I. responded yes, referring specifically to his youngest daughter, Deja Harris, who he said recently started her first year of college. He said, quote, not only... Have we had the conversation? We have yearly trips to the gynecologist to check her hymen. He also said that the gynecologist informed him that the hymen can be broken by means other than sexual intercourse, such as bike riding, athletics, horseback riding, and other athletic physical activity. T.I. said he told the gynecologist, quote, Look, Doc, she don't ride no horses. She don't ride no bike. She don't play no sports. Just check the hymen, please, and give me back my results inexplicitly. So what do you think about that, Amber? I think this is probably one of the grossest things I have ever heard in my life. Where's the privacy? You know, I, I find it very hypocritical that here's this person who, who made his millions off of talking about girls mm -hmm. and sexual acts with girls and girls performing sexual acts mm -hmm. and girls doing sexual acts. And now he wants to go in and uh, honestly just embarrass, yeah. embarrass the one the one girl in this world that he should probably not intermingle his weird sexual, uh, I, I don't know, sexual, I don't want to say experience, but his sexual uh, education. Who does that to their daughter? I don't I, know. I mean, I mean, really, I think sometimes celebrities, they flip their noodle. They get so high on themselves that they, I mean... That, that's crazy. He says, he told the podcast host, he says, quote, I will say, as of her 18th birthday, her hymen is still intact. That is something that your father should never know. No. And and I have been following the story pretty heavily because, you know, I think that it is absolutely an invasion of privacy. If the girl's 18 and she wants to do whatever she wants to do, that that's her prerogative. Yeah. But... Don't blast her on social media. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah, that's and that's a, exactly what he does. Yeah, he just said, oh, my 18-year-old daughter's a virgin, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Why Why do that? I I don't know. Thankfully, this girl has does have some common sense, because obviously she didn't get it from her father and her mother. Uh, Lord, that woman on her own is crazy. But uh, she's unfollowed the entire family. I think she she's going to step out of the family. And they've removed the podcast. But you can't remove what people already know, T.I. Yeah. Unfortunately, we know we know who you are and what you've done and what you said. Yeah, you like to go to the gynecologist with your daughter. With your daughter. To see if her hymen is still in shape. I, I, mean, wonder, I wonder if he sings whatever you like when they're driving to the OB. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> if that's how the car ride goes. I mean, 
<laughs> yeah, how are you going to how are you going to be such a hypocrite, get on the radio, sell this music and talk about having sex with multiple people. Multiple people and, all the time talking but, about women genitalia all the time. All the time, but it's okay, but it's not okay uh, for your daughter or or I understand that it's not okay for your young daughter to have sex. I understand. But she's not young, she's 18. 18, I understand that. At this point, she can do whatever she wants. But and he's he's holding this over her the, with the money and stuff. Like, oh, I won't give you money. But to check to see if her hymen's still intact, that's. I mean, I hate to say it, but obviously she can't have whatever she like. She can't. She can't. She can't, do it. <laughs> she can't have whatever she like. Amber and her zingers. <laughs> I mean, I just think this is absolutely absurd. I really do. I think honestly, it should almost be. Illegal. It should be a violation of some type of HIPAA. I think any patient that's over the age of sixteen should be able to withhold those records. Yeah. And I honestly think that that is that is the case when it comes to specialty things like this. I think that it should have been a HIPAA violation. But do you think though that uh, if if uh, so, are you telling me that his daughter? So she's out of his house now. She's. I know she's unfollowed the entire family so on social media. So she's not getting no more daddy money. Well, I, you know what? I wouldn't want that kind of money. I wouldn't want that kind of money either. If you got to look at my private parts to give me a little bit of money, is maybe he looking? it's going gonna to have to be a lot of money. Is he looking at them? He might as well be. He might, he might as well be. Right. I mean, he knows it. Just come right on in, daddy. I mean, and how embarrassing is it? How embarrassing is it, honestly, that... When the doctor says everything looks good, she's her hymen's still there. Well, I mean, how how embarrassing <laughs> is that for her? That's humiliating. It's already embarrassing to go to appointments like that. Yeah, you know, no woman really wants to go to the OB. Let alone, do you want to go to the OB with your daddy? No, you don't. No, you don't. Want to Mm-mm. Go. Not gonna roll into my OB with my daddy. Hey guys, brought my dad today. Check my hymen. Mm. Yeah, no. Yeah. Mm-mm. It's bad news. That's a no for me. It's bad news. Okay, Amber, you told me to give you 10 seconds of, uh, of air time. Yes. I'll give you more if you need it. No, don't need it. Go um, ahead. So, you know, I am uh, back at EKU, and the EKU Environmental Health Association Club, which I am a part of, is doing a drive for Arbor Youth. They're located here in Lexington. They are a local company. Um, it does help uh, with our homeless population, whether it be adult, and they do children as well. Um, they're ha- we're having a drive for them. If you would like additional information, um, not only about EKU's Environmental Health Club, Arbor Youth, uh, or the drive itself, you can locate that on uh, my Facebook. I've shared it. And um, the EKU um, Environmental Health Club has also shared it. So Thank you very much. There you go. Check uh, everybody. There's the info. Do, yep. do what you make. Okay, we are going to take our last commercial break, and when we come back, we got an in-person studio. We got yeah the boy, the boy, the bueno, boy, boy, bueno, a.k.a. B&B, in the studio, going to be playing some new music. I think we're dropping a song today. We're dropping a song? I think so. It's going to be good. And it's a good day to drop a song. Yeah, and he's going to, you know when you sit down in the off-the-cuff seat and you get grilled by the host, it's a grilling experience. It's, are you ready to answer the, the questions is, is the thing. Is, I think, I think you do just fine. Is B&B ready? I think you do just fine. Is he ready? Is if, he, if I can handle you, anybody is, can. Is he, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, for real. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got live in studio B&B, Boy Muy Bueno, coming up right after these words. Stick with us. Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? It's hot in here. Hey, this is Lane with Life in the Fast Lane. <laughs> Tune in on Fridays from 1 to 2 p.m. as we play uh, up and is music to three. energize your day and provide thoughtful conversations so you appreciate what's happening around you. Uh, uh, Tiffany, move a little closer, just in case. I don't know if I'll... Just in case. We set her up, Amber. Make sure her...
Now you can bring Lexington Community Radio with you wherever you go with the new app for smartphones and tablets. The WLXU app is available on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. Just search for WLXU. You can stream what is currently playing from your phone or tablet no matter where you are. Keep up with news from the station or catch on-demand episodes of your favorite talk shows. The WLXU app is available on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. everybody to off the cuff last segment of the hour adam banks here with you ember is also in the studio with me ember do you feel like people are always hating <laughs> well yeah <laughs> i mean was that even a question yeah i mean that's a given i love that song if they you know what they they say if you have haters if you don't have haters you're not doing it right exactly so you gotta have haters i wonder if this individual has haters ladies and gentlemen in the studio so happy to be joined uh, finally, in the studio, I've had him be at the telephone, but now I have him in studio to talk with us. Boy, boy, bueno, what's going on, my man? Hey, what's happening, guys? And so, uh, finally, nice to have you here all the way from Huntington. Now, is Huntington where you grew up? No, no, definitely not. So, tell us about where you grew up. Well, uh, I was actually born in Houston, Texas, uh, but I was just, I was too young at the time, so I really, you know, I don't have no recollection of that area, but uh, when I was old enough to succumb to having a mental mind, I guess you would say I was in Ohio. But uh, I was there up to about the age of 12. Yep. Uh, you know, my mom, my dad, they had their, their nice little history of how she was uh, kind of like you guys from over in eastern Kentucky. And she also had a lot of rebel in her blood. So she decided to take off south towards Florida. He was actually illegal from Mexico back at the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, after a few attempts, he had got caught and sent back. He actually was uh, successful with his trip over. So they met in Florida. Well, you know, the Texas trip come, ended up moving to that area. And, uh, you know, sure enough, my older brother came, then I came. Uh, soon after that, we moved to Ohio. My grandmother actually come from Kentucky up to that area, so uh, so I was there as well. Yeah, uh, that's where we kind of we made roots there in a place called Londonderry. But uh, soon after that, we took off to uh, Kentucky around age twelve. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess the relationship kind of went as far as it could between mother and father before before things went wrong. So we t we took off, and uh, I become what we would call an Allen Central Rebel. Oh down in them no! <laughs> so are you an Eastern Kentucky honky? <laughs> <laughs> well, they call me their Mexi Reb down in parts. <laughs> So, what's it like growing up in uh, Eastern Kentucky, uh, being from Mexico? Like, is it, uh, was there any struggle with that? Or Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll define it all in three words. Total culture shock. Yeah. For someone like say. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what, why? Well, when I come to the area, you know, uh, like, of course, it's funny to have, uh, like, the mascot of the school be what we call, you know, the rebel. So, you see the little rebel man, and, <laughs> yeah. and of course, all of my peers that I actually went to school with at the time was just, everybody was white. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, myself, I kind of didn't even understand, you know, the, the difference of color and race at the time. Yeah. So, even me, myself, was just another one, little hicks yeah. from Kentucky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 mean, I don't, I, we take it for granted sometimes, if I was at a school with uh, where ninety percent of the people were just of a different race than me, I would feel out of place. So I, I always wonder, you know, really seriously, really, what is going on in your head? Do you really ever feel like you're out of place? Well, I mean, it's the funny thing about all that is, is whenever I, uh, whenever I first come to school, there is when I actually start to hear racial, you know, slurs. Yeah. And anyway, at the time, I didn't know what that meant. So uh, after I started hearing these, I was thinking, you know, I go home like, mom, what does this mean? Yeah. You say. Who called you that? Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, it, would go on. So, uh, it went on to the to the point to where I actually had to get physical with somebody. Really? And, but once I'd done that, it's kind of, I got my seat. And since then, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm part of the crew now. Oh, they saw that you, went, you wasn't nobody to be messed with. Uh, I mean, you, I guess that would be in, in their eyes, which to me, you know, I was intimidated from coming into to this kind of level of population outside of, you know, in an ethnic group that I wasn't. Mm. But uh, I guess once that happened, uh, I guess we would say the tables turned a little bit. So how long have you been making music? Uh, I started like when I was 16, you know, 16, 16 and a half. Uh, like I said, when the last time we spoke, I told you I almost quit a few times. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, uh, like the term you spoke earlier, I did have haters. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, and it's like a mental thing you have inside your head as well that makes you think, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe these people, is they're, maybe they're right. Maybe I should just let it go. Everyone's laughing. You know, I don't want people to laugh. I would like people to hear the message, if anything. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, that, that took a, a big spiral for me there for a few times. 
That's uh, so. Let's talk about this song here that we're going to play on the radio today. Uh, talk a little bit about it. The the name of it here. I have it. What was it called? On drip. On drip. Tell, where does that song come from? Um, pretty much. It's uh, it's a song that speaks about you know what I am now at this point from what I, what I've accumulated. Uh, when I first started, uh, when I, you know this little journey I had, like I was speaking a momentarily ago, it speaks about how. I was just made fun of, really. Yeah. You know, I was laughed at. I was just, you know, shoot aside. Like, it's not going to be no big deal. Uh, so anyway, you know, as time went on, as long as I, I stay consistent, I had this, a good friend of mine that I met not long ago told me that as long as I stayed around the barbershop, eventually I'll get a haircut. Uh, yeah. Hey, I, I, think, I think we got a mutual friend then. <laughs> I love that quote. I mean, I do, and I appreciate you quoting me on that. And I, I love it. So... Would you say a lot of your music is just inspired by kind of your your uh, background of growing up and most definitely, most definitely. Uh, I would say uh, yes, yes, uh, and and not really all of it's good. You know, like we spoke earlier, like yeah. the, you know the term hater, this and that. A lot of this stuff comes from anger at times, yeah. but I mean you still have to kind of put a muffle on you know oh, your, yeah. your your emotions at yeah. times because if you kind of come out too hard, you're going to turn a lot of people off. I, you know, and it's funny that you mention a lot of it's angry. You know, you have a lot of anger in your music. In order to make it, I think everyone has to have somewhat of a chip on their shoulder. They've got to get that chip on their shoulder to to drive them. I don't know about you, but for me, uh, what drives me is the haters. Well, I mean, and it sounds cliche, but it truly is. And and uh, to get to get a little mad, you know. I, People will say, "Well, why are you so mad? Why are you so angry?" I, I don't know why I'm mad or angry. I just, I, it's, it's like you know that people are rooting against you, actively rooting against you. So that makes you. It does nothing but and fuel me. And Most it, definitely. Does it do the same for you? Most definitely, a hundred percent. And I find it fascinating that you are uh, married to a childhood friend of mine. Well, don't jump the gun on them just yet. <laughs> yeah. Don't jump the gun on them just yet. They're not married. Uh, you're not married? I'm married, yeah. Wait, <laughs> I'm married? So, you're not... Okay, wait, wait, wait. I thought you two were married. So, you guys... How long have you been with Tiffany, my friend? Oh, uh, I'd say probably for the better part of, like, two years now. Yeah. I think they've known each other for a while, though, haven't Oh, most you? definitely. We've been childhood friends uh, for the longest time. Uh, Tiffany, uh, get on the mic. Say hello to the people. Hello. Hello. And remove that microphone a little bit closer to her mouth. So, I know. I gave her clear instructions. You'd think we never knew each other before. Yeah, she, I gave her them instructions. She's a little shy. Now, did I make it awkward, Tiffany, when I said uh, how long have you two been married? A little bit. So did I put the pressure a little bit? <laughs> did I, did I, I don't know that you can put pressure on these guys. I think, they, I think they're pretty uh, solid with each other. Yeah. Pretty solid, but let's not be talking marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, I haven't seen you in... I'm going to say 15 years. It's been that. Yeah. So that what was, what is it like seeing adult Adam Banks? Is it odd at all? It's like seeing you 15 years ago. Is I it? I told you he'd be the yeah. same. I'm the same guy? Yeah. I like that. It's the exact same I'm just Adam. I'm the same Adam Banks. I just turned the voltage up a little bit. A lot. A li- yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. Like, it's okay to change and, and to evolve. I think we all have evolved and changed. Yeah. But my core, I'm the same guy. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. You're still the same. Still uh, same. Hopper, Adam, all over the place. Still the same snake eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys have to drop the snake eyes. I have to, because I got somebody to back me up. Yeah. yeah. You gave us all nicknames. Mm. Well, so, yeah. She did say, she mentioned to me uh, the last time I was on, she's like, I cannot believe they called me bugger. Oh, <laughs> when I get my chance, and this was her revenge that she applied right here. <laughs> Tell everybody what I was like growing up, Tiffany, if you can remember. You were wild, like, all over the place. Like, when you say um, I was wild, like, what do you mean by that? Like, so much hyperness in you, just all over it's the place. The and just all about wrestling. That's all there is. <laughs> not, much, not much has changed. Some, some things haven't changed. <laughs> <laughs> all about wrestling. We all had to have nicknames. Did you yeah. everybody. Did you see me growing up doing this? Uh, no. No? No. What did you see me growing but up it, doing? It, it, it makes sense now that you are doing this. Like, oh. You probably seen me growing up to be a loser, didn't you? No. <laughs> no. no. Did you see me growing no, up? No, I saw you doing some big things for sure. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, now I'm curious, but like, so you saw me, you said you saw me doing big things, but what were these big things? I like, I like details. 
Well, he dabbled a lot. He dabbled in yeah. a lot of different things. You know, you were a talk show host, you know, during first period. You were a wrestler <laughs> during second yeah. period. Yeah. And you were writing songs about people in third and yeah. fourth. So, I mean, you were kind of all over the place, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was interviewing people, remember? Yeah, that? we were interviewing. We were interviewing. At the he lunch was, line. Yeah. And even walking through the door in the morning, he'd have his microphone ready. Yes. <laughs> yes. Actually, you know what? I'm pretty sure you, you Tiffany, you got into a fight. You got into a fight in sixth grade, and you, Adam Banks, met me at the door, and I think you interviewed me then. Yeah. You did. Yeah. You interviewed oh, me. Oh, the post, the post fight interview. Post fight interview. Yeah. As soon as I hit the door. Yeah. No clue what was going on. <laughs> All right. Well, Tiffany, it's really good to see you. Boy, boy, bueno. I'm excited to hear this music on Drips. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to close out the show to Boy, Boy, Bueno's new single, uh, On Drip. Uh, how, where can we find your music? Uh, you can catch me on YouTube under the same name you just said, which is Boy Moy Bueno. I'm also on SoundCloud as well. Uh, if you haven't heard of uh, a site called Reverb Nation, I'm on that baby as well. Absolutely. There you go, folks. Well, thank you for listening to Off the Cuff. Amber, always uh, fun doing the show with you. Boy Moy Bueno, thank you for stopping in and bringing your lovely uh, girlfriend, <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend, <laughs> Tiffany. It's just a habit. Everybody's Bug, married. Uh, yeah. I'm so used to everybody being married. I'm not married, but I'm so I'm used to wrong I'm so that. used to everybody else being married. It's just a habit. I, I was uh, I was gonna go ahead and throw this out real quick yep. too. That uh, here recently I actually come in, in touch with a guy you know that I follow on Instagram. His yep. name is Bass God. Uh, he's he's a producer. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, he's from over towards the Netherlands. So uh, we should actually have a new twist of things that's going to be you know coming up uh, on the forefront very soon. Oh, that'll be fun. I love it. And social media, give out your uh, social media handles. Oh, let's see. You can catch me on Facebook, but uh, I don't really have my, my name under Boy Moy Bueno. It's actually under my own name, which you can actually find that name on my YouTube channel and be able to just you know search me from there. Yeah. But uh, you can also catch me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and all those is uh, Boy Moy Bueno. Yeah, you don't care that people know your real name because I know a lot of rappers are weird about it yeah, like T.I. No. He, he don't want nobody to know his first name's Clifford can you blame him on that <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I guess I don't blame him <laughs> but so yeah alright all right, ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening to the show check us out on facebook.com slash off the cup with Adam Banks check us out next Thursday from 4 to 5 that is Ember Turner I'm Adam Banks we're going to close the show with some boy muy bueno on drip enjoy be safe and have a great week everyone My outfit on trip, check my neck, my wrist, told you watch your steps, I promise you won't slip, my lifestyle on trip. Thank you guys for listening to the show. Uh, sorry I couldn't really answer some of these show three questions. My outfit on trip, check my neck, my wrist, told you watch your steps, but I will get to them soon. Thank you very much for watching.